Let me take you on a journey. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> So the Fears Watch Company is interestingly one of Britain's oldest and youngest watch companies. So Fears was originally founded here in the city of Bristol in 1846 by a young watchmaker called Edwin Fear. And the business thrived. It passed through three generations of the Fear family going from Edwin to his son to his grandson. It managed to survive two world wars and in the second world war all of the premises received direct hits. But then in the 70s, what happened was the next generation didn't want to continue the business. And rather than sell it or see it merged off into oblivion, they decided to just close it. So I'm at Rolex enjoying my job. However, after a meeting with a pension advisor where he jokingly reminded me I had only 39 more years to go until retirement, I realized there's more. I can do more than just sit at this workbench repairing Rolexes every day. Would I set up my own company? Would I change careers? What would it be? And as my mother is serving the roast potatoes, she jokingly says in only the way that mothers can, well, darling, why don't you restart the family watch company? And my immediate thought is, what family watch company? And at that moment, it was brought to my attention that I was actually the great, great, great grandson of Edwin Fear. And if you want a eureka moment, that is it. So I often get asked, how do you start up a watch company in 2016? Now, if you were to ask the same question about today, how do you set up a watch company? You have podcasts to listen to, YouTube videos, there's whole blog posts, there's whole articles being written about people like myself and what we did. But you go back to 2016, that information didn't exist. You know, think of things like Instagram, it was only a handful of years old. YouTube was not the YouTube of today and podcasts, well, they didn't really exist. So you go back to 2016 and it was really difficult. The first place I start, of course, was Google, how to set up a watch company. And that presented a few forum posts. And that information gave me a kickstart into learning there were different routes you could go. You could find a manufacturer and present your ideas and then they would create them. Or you could do a route that we still do to this day where we come up with the design and we go to a case maker, a dial maker, a movement maker, and get all the parts made and then assemble ourselves. But before I really understood that, I thought the best place to do would be to ask other watch brand owners. Now, back in 2016, there were very, very few British watch companies. Today, there's 80. Back then, there was about eight. And to go and ask these people, how do you do it? Like, what would be your words of advice? A lot of them were very nervous to give any information away. Big thing that made a huge difference was getting on a plane and flying out to Switzerland. So it's no real secret that Switzerland is the global hub of watch manufacturing. So I went there to a big trade show and basically went around just asking people. I went around having a look, just trying to absorb as much information as I could. So would I recommend setting up a watch company today in 2023? I'm naturally going to say yes, of course I would, because this is my livelihood, this is the business I've grown, this is what I love. But I wouldn't say automatically it's for everyone. The reason is, making a, a watch is a very complex thing. It's a very crowded marketplace, and it's something that you have to have deep down a huge passion for a passion to make something. If you want to make money, there are many, many easier ways to do it than running a watch company. But if you want to make something that will outlive you and outlive its owner, then a watch company is the perfect thing to do. Setting up a watch company isn't something you set up and run for a couple of years. That's not possible. It's something you set up and start the momentum going and it builds and builds and builds. 